Live from deep in an underground bunker in East Tennessee, this is America's premier mortgage fuel services expert, Paul Williams. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you back to another edition of Foreclosure Pedia Podcast. Foreclosure Pedia Podcast presentation of the Foreclosure Pedia Radio Network, which premieres each Sunday. Now, I had a <clears throat> had a couple of people out there in the Foreclosure Pedia Nation reach out to me, and they said, "You know, we're having some website problems. We, we don't want a new website. We just, you know, need to troubleshoot. Can you help us out with that?" And uh, y- you know, <clears throat> that is one of the most incredible. Uh, opportunities um, that a person could get in their lifetime. The ability to share and to spread knowledge. When you look at Foreclosurepedia today as a web page, <clears throat> it's built upon what's called WordPress. Now, the jury's out on precisely how many uh, websites on planet Earth are, are ran uh, by WordPress. Some of the lower figures are about 29%. Some of the higher figures in upwards of 50%. And when you figure how many websites there actually are on Earth, we're, you know, we really are tipping the scale. WordPress is an open source program. <clears throat> and the community is uh, it, it, it's the same mentality. So if you get bored, uh, go on to Google and take a look at open source, what it's about, WordPress, and uh, you, know, you can go from there. But today what we're going to talk about <clears throat> is we have a website right in here and the problem that presents is there's supposed to be some widgets along in here with icons now those icons you can go out and buy anything you want in life or there's an open source version of it generally for free Uh, that doesn't mean everything that that is open source is free that just means that a lot of it is and it also does not mean that, and I know you've heard the adage, free is not necessarily good. But generally I've found, in about 90% of the cases with open source platforms, it's all good. So let's talk a little bit about icons and what we're looking at today. Font, awesome. Oh, better spell that, right? So here you can see, this is actually the, uh, this is a, a bootstrap cheat sheet on Font Awesome. Uh, and all that means is these icons right here. <clears throat> so these have to be called within a, a website. And to show you precisely how easy it is, how do you want to call it? Now, for example, in Foreclosurepedia, most of my calls are done with the I class. But, uh, you know, if you're old school and coding HTML, <clears throat> or if you're starting to get with the new wave, you're embedding it in the CSS, Cascade Style Sheets, doesn't matter. Either way, you're going to get the product. We come over here. <clears throat> and you can see, so this is the, the main website for Font Awesome icons. That's uh, fontawesome.github dot io backslash font dash awesome backslash and uh you know I, i'm not pushing font awesome because i get a kickback or you know i'm pushing them because i mean they're, they're just incredible they're free they're incredible it's a good project good thing to get uh, uh behind uh, dave uh dave gandy <clears throat> was a gentleman who, who originally put it forth but as you can see some of the other really neat things is uh so you don't have to have JavaScript to, to power this on the back end. Free, as in free speech. Now, there's a lot of us here in the United States who might argue whether or not we have free speech anymore. However, it is what it is while well, we have the emperor in the White House. You can see all through here, it doesn't matter what your question is going to be. <clears throat> you can get it answered. So in the perfect world, you know... <clears throat> when you installed something, it would work. And we, we tend to call that uh, plug and play. Uh, but, you know, it's not a perfect world. And so thus we have, uh, <clears throat> so what we have is, once again, we have all these uh, incredible icons. 
And I want to give a, a shout out here to James Croft. He's, he's down there in Brisbane, Australia. He actually put together the bootstrap uh, uh, cheat sheet in here and such. <clears throat> so you have all these incredible icons that you can use free of charge, no copyright, no nothing. And the problem is that presents is getting that icon to appear over here on the website. So, <clears throat> and, and, and I digress. Let's go back just a step. So, we're in here, and one of our deals is that, uh, so we need uh, to make some of these icons work. So as you can see here, this is our <clears throat> admin menu in WordPress. You go over here to the appearance, and you can select, I mean, virtually anything you want. And, and you know, point of reference here, <clears throat> all modern, uh, and I, I, I want to say since version 4.0, maybe a little bit before, but it's required to have this customize right up here. And so we'll see a lot of the appearance, so to speak, phase out. But anyway, we're going to select it here. And you can see it brings us up here to this screen right now. Now, <clears throat> this is the, the website live. This was just a test to make sure that, that I could do that in a gray and blah, blah, blah. What we want to actually look at right now is we want to come down here and we're going to select a widget. <laughs> and we're going to pick one randomly. So we'll just say, you know, add a widget uh, and we're going to place it in position three. And to test that out, what we're going to do is, and we'll go ahead and just pick uh, the, the button. Uh, and in, incidentally, this is a uh, theme, and that's, that's kind of what we call the flavor or the clothing of, of the website. Uh, site Origin, <coughs> excuse me, puts this out. Uh, Sleeky is the name. But anyway, so we want to go in here, and, and so we'll just put test something. We're not going to worry about the URL, which means you click this button, it's going to send you somewhere. Here's where our issue presents. As you can see, we're, none of these icons are loading up. So, and as you can see, and, and all these come, all these icons through here, these are all free. So we have over, you know, close to 2,000 icons, but... Ico Moon, uh, and incidentally, I do know for a fact there's a uh, Google Chrome uh, add-on for that. Make it really simple, but once again, nothing. But let's go ahead, <coughs> excuse me, and um, let's go Font Awesome. Should be something standard, so we selected something there. And you can see here it is right here. So, our problem is, so, <coughs> what can we do? You know, and, and I went ahead previously and I, I went ahead and filled stuff all in here and tried to mix and match. And it, and it just really didn't do anything. Opened and expanded all the tabs. So what do you do when you have a question? Uh, it is probably the one word that has slipped into our vocabulary uh, and we didn't even know it. You Google it. It's just like when you go to the store and you say, you don't say, I want a pop. Or I want to sell you, so I want a Coke. That's what it is, and is what it is. So I went ahead and went into Google, <clears throat> and I found the homepage for Site Origin, and I had typed in here um, information. Font Awesome is broke, and I found a couple of posts that I thought were were pretty much spot on, but this one especially uh, because of the fact that uh, <clears throat> they talk about a misdirection uh, right here uh, in, in how Font Awesome is being called within the code itself. So <clears throat> if you're on, uh, if you have your own website and domain, this one actually is hosted through TMD Hosting. No, I, I, I get no money from them. But I tell you what, when Foreclosurepedia first started, they were our first uh, uh, provider. Uh, they were incredible then. They're incredible now. $46.20 for a year. You just can't beat it. Now, in addition to cPanel, and, and, and so I digress. Let, let's talk about cPanel just a little bit. And let's talk about these options in here. I did a large series on the uh, <coughs> excuse me, MX 
and the DNS records. And what this deals with is, for example, when you get an email from me, my email address at foreclosurepedia.org, that's actually not coming from, if you will, my domain. <clears throat> I have what's called Google Business Apps. Uh, I, I was actually one of the first people to ever get it back when it was in alpha, stick, stuck with them through beta. And, uh, you know, so today, uh, you know, I have 10 accounts for free, uh, one of which I, I deal with foreclosurepedia.org. <coughs> so, and that's what all this deals with here, the, the mail. How does mail get to and fro? But what we're curious and interested about is what's going on inside the guts. So, when you go into cPanel, uh, make sure Show Hidden Files is selected. And, and why is that? Today we're not dealing with HT access, but you may, <coughs> excuse me, down the road, and unless those hidden files are revealed, you can't see them. And as you can see, for whatever reason, we're going to have to put a ticket in on this. And, and folks, that's, that's kind of the deal with shared hosting. You know, uh, infinite spin. So, what we're going to do is we're going to FTP. File transfer protocol. And, and that's the old school. And, you know, that's the old school way of doing things. Now, I'm going to attempt to uh, adjust this. I think it'll raise up. There we are. <clears throat> so, what we're using is what's called FileZilla. So, FileZilla, back in the day when I was... Uh, Hacking, I mean, excuse me, not hacking, exploring the internet. Um, everything had to be done from command line. And to show you what command line is, uh, let's run as admin. <clears throat> so, you'd come in here and, for example, uh, simple command, dir slash w. So, that's going to give me every file that's in that system 32. Now, if I go, for example, dir slash w slash p then it's going to allow me to go through like this with the pause uh i love command line you know i'm just old school it is how it is but filezilla was the first time we were able uh to manipulate files uh with, with what we call a gui gui which is graphic users interface so enough of the lecture <clears throat> we need to go ahead and uh, access the website. So, what do we do in here? Easiest way, site manager. I happen to have plugged all this in in advance. Uh, so, we're going to see if it works. Let's see here. <clears throat> and here we go. We're off to the races, hopefully. Could not connect. So, I can tell you right there, we'll have an issue. And what we did was we went ahead and threw in a ticket. Uh, and, and so anyway, we're inside the C panel now. That's where we're at right now. The, uh, the FileZilla, as you can see right here, it couldn't connect to the server. And it is what it is. So I, I had a typo. It's just easier to do it this way. <clears throat> so what is it precisely that makes uh, WordPress work? All these files right through here. And what do they do? Well, these three right here, these three folders, these are your major folders. <coughs> and down here, these are all the PHP and ancillary files on the front end uh, that, that allows, if you will, the back end to actually get, kick into high gear and do what it's supposed to do. So we want to come into the WP content folder. And incidentally, I'm going to tell you all folks something. <coughs> when you're classifying any of your folders with the prefix WP, you're inviting me or a multitude of other people out there on the internet to come nosing around your website. Because that's half the battle. Discovering discovering what what the uh, <clears throat> what the nomenclature is of those folders. Uh, and I, I want to say it was like podcast 243 we got into that. Uh, but anyway, so here we are. <clears throat> And we want to go into the themes. And we're running Sleeky. And so you can see we're in here now. We want to, and, and incidentally, where do I get all this from? Remember that search we did earlier? And this gentleman over there at uh, Site Origin, he threw this up here. 
So what this told me was, and we all know we have WP content, we have the themes, Vantage, in this case it's Sleeky. This information right here, rarely if ever, is going to change. Now the version's going to, blah, blah, blah. But, so we just keep drilling down. And so here we are now. And so here's our information. So, what precisely are we looking for? in here and in theory should we not be able to take all of this copy it and let's go to a new tab paste don't put paste and go just put paste and enter in the the website we're at let's see what happens here And so it calls the information. Now we know that it's actually version 4.2.0. Question is, is that correct? Uh, you know, but we can see all of our code is here. <clears throat> this, once again, ladies and gentlemen, you, you, you really need to understand what powers a website, and this is something for my client I'm gonna handle. There, I should not be able to call any file other than where the website allows you to go based upon your your permission settings. Uh, you can refer to, I want to say this podcast 134, 138, don't quote me, uh, where we get into the HT access files in and of themselves. But so our information looks good here. So what do we do? Well, let's see here. So we're going to go ahead and drill down a little bit on the CSS. Uh, take a look at uh, what's going on and oh here we are so this is the file this is the file and as you recall <clears throat> uh, we, we originally called that uh, and and that file actually makes all this happen let's uh, once again make sure we still have an issue that presents and I, I call that <clears throat> uh, ghost in the machine it's a long story about that, but any coder who's been around a minute, they're going to tell you about that because it actually does exist. Uh, yep, and we're, we're still screwed. Screwed, blued, and tattooed, ladies and gentlemen. We can see we have a problem. Uh, so, just out of curiosity, shift-click, and we can't do anything with it. So, <clears throat> now begins phase two which is troubleshooting so i went out on the internet uh and i googled our good friend google <laughs> and i found this post that actually is spot on as you can see this is our problem we're having this was the fix that this gentleman uh proposed and the other part of it is right in here uh, and, and so this, once again, the Cascade Style Sheet, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, is right over in here. So let's take a, let's, let's drill down on that just for a moment. Now, as everybody remembers, we, we talked about the HT Access file. Now, this file actually is in, <clears throat> excuse me, the WP Content folder. Tell that right here. Because there's several of these that, that we actually want to do some work on. Uh, and you can see here, just some simple coding. Uh, but that's not the file we're at, the HT access we're looking for. Now we're at our public HTML folder. We want to go into this one. Click the code editor. And you can see this is what we have. <clears throat> when we go back and read this gentleman's uh, information here, uh, he, he seems to think, and, and it may or may not be our issue, uh, adding that script, if you will, those instructions into our HT access should handle it. So let's uh, let's go down here a little bit, and let's uh, let's go ahead and do this. Um, so we're gonna now the deal on this is so coding's an interesting deal. It's like your first girlfriend; you're just fumbling in the dark. But um, <clears throat> we want to make sure that we have some good readability here and everything looks good so I don't know let's see what happens 
we've saved it. Now let's uh, let's go back over to the website. Let's see what happens. And nothing has happened. So we know that that is not the issue. Now, <clears throat> generally on these pieces of code, and what we're doing right now is we're refreshing that. Windows 10, that's going to be F5. Uh, 8 and below, you're going to just go Control F5. But, you know, it, it clears the cache. We can see there's just nothing going on here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, toss in a ticket. Uh, we're going to lay this over on the, the web host and, and see what they have to say. Uh, in the meantime, <clears throat> we're going to be right back here next Sunday with our fix to this problem. And we're also going to reach out. Matter of fact, we will reach out here in the next, uh, next half hour to Aaron Aviero, All Day LLC. <clears throat> and we also want to give a great shout out to uh, Stacy Galvin. Ms. Galvin is our uh, uh, sound engineer here at uh, the Foreclosurepedia Western Command, the Area 51 complex. And, uh, you know, uh, everybody thinks that the, um, the podcast just takes off of its own accord. I guess that I ad-lib everything. Um, but there's a lot of bells and whistles that go on behind the scenes. And Stacy's part of that. So say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> there we are. So we'll catch you here. Foreclosure Pedia Radio Network, and right after this. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. As usual, you may reach me on Google Plus at D. Paul Williams, LinkedIn, Paul Williams, and the LinkedIn Group Property Preservation Consortium, Twitter, Foreclosure Pedia. We stream all our podcasts on iTunes, Foreclosure Pedia. We have our screencasts over on YouTube, the Foreclosurepedia channel, and always at foreclosurepedia.org. We'd like to give a special shout out to Amazon.com, whom provides our S3 podcast and video storage, and Cloudfair for hosting Foreclosurepedia in 24 different geopositioned servers, pro bono as well. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to give me a shout out, COO at foreclosurepedia.org.